All right, Saturday, December the 10th, about 8.30 in the morning, and it's a frosty one out today, as you might be able to see. Minus 8 degrees Celsius. And we're just uh, heading out to the garage to put the heat on. So we can start a new project on the uh, 81 Alfa Romeo Spider. We are going to uh, be installing some new shocks on the car today. So, in order to get that happening, we're going to get some heat out on that up here. It's 40 degrees Fahrenheit, 5 degrees Celsius in the garage. So, a little too chilly to be out here handling tools and rolling around on the concrete floor. So this is the standard process in order to get prepped to be out here for the next couple days. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have a major cleanup out here and put all our tools away so we can start fresh on that baby. All right, just about to start the uh, installation of these classic uh, Coney's or uh, Coney Red shocks, which are adjustable shocks that are highly recommended for the Alpha Spiders. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, front bushings, poly bushings standing by for the front shocks, if required. I know they're already bushed. Um, I wasn't actually sure of that when I ordered the shocks, so we ordered the bushings on the side, but I see that they are bushed after having unpacked them. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the car up off the front ramps and we are going to loosen the lug nuts off. We're going to take the, tar the four wheels off the car just to make it a little bit easier to work on. And um, we'll loosen those lug nuts off, get the car up on jack stands at the front, remove the ramps and then we'll go to town on removing the front shocks first. We'll go easy to hard. So the uh, shock installation on the front is much easier than the rear. The rear requires a little bit of disassembly of the interior. Uh, to get to the inside, uh, you have to pull the shocks out from the inside of the car. So there's these two plates that you need to remove to be able to do that. We'll get there shortly, but let's concentrate on the front shocks first. Easy first, hard later. All right, this is probably going to be a little bit dark. I'll try to do my best to, uh, to film this. But uh, obviously we're at the front of the car and you can see the stock Spica shock there that's original to the car. So we're basically after these lower bolts here and that is a 17 mil wrench on that fitting there. And then we're after the top shock fitting up there. There's a uh, jam nut and a regular nut or a lock nut and a regular nut those seem to both be 17 mil as well. So we're gonna go after the bottom nut first and then we'll go after the top. We've got our wrenches standing by. Uh, I have sprayed penetrating uh, oil there on the top and on the bottom. As you can probably see, that's wet. So that should have helped us. I sprayed that a couple of days ago and let it sit in uh, preparation to do this job. So let's go ahead and remove that lower bolt and then we'll move to the top. All right, we've got the uh, bottom mount off and we've just used a little pry bar to slide that off the, uh, the mounting location. Now you need to do that as you need to sort of pull the shock down a little bit, I believe, in order to get the uh, two nuts off the top of the shock. So I should mention that the lock nut, so the top nut is a 17 mil and the bottom nut, the fastening nut, is a 19 mil. So you'll need two different wrench sizes for the front there. It's very close to the top so when you're trying to get those nuts off, like I said, you may need to pull the shock down and uh, to be able to get the nuts off, otherwise you're going to interfere with the bodywork on the inner fender. All right, shock is now removed successfully. It wasn't too difficult, nothing was seized, so I think you can see that pretty well. So just as a quick note, the bottom hardware, so you've got a sort of a spacer washer that goes on that uh, lower shock mount first and then you've got a regular washer, a lock washer, and a nut to hold the bottom shock on. Uh, we'll just uh, take the old shock over to the bench just so you can have a quick look at it and we'll talk about 
the assembly of the bushings at the top of the shock and we'll take a look at the uh, new Coney red shocks. Alright guys, we have the uh, old stock shock on the workbench beside the new Coney red or Coney classic shock. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about part numbers first for the Coney uh, shock. So this is a adjustable shock. It's internally adjustable and what I mean by that is if you want to adjust the settings on this shock it needs to be removed from the car. There are some shocks that actually have an external adjustment. I have some SPAC shocks on my uh, TR250 for example that have a knob down at the bottom. I know there are some Coney's that actually have a knob I believe on the top but for these cl classic red shocks it's an internal adjustment and I'll go through the adjustment process in just a little bit. So as far as a part number is concerned, I'm not sure if you can read that in the camera, it's 801551. Obviously these are the front shocks. I mentioned that I bought poly bushings for these because I couldn't determine when I bought the shocks if they were already bushed or not. So I don't wanted to make sure I had some bushings. So these are already poly bushed. If they were rubber bushed, I'd probably change them out for poly. Uh, since the rubber today is not so great, it actually deteriorates fairly quickly. So. Anyway, um, we're going to leave the stock bushing in place here and not replace it. If you wanted to go to a poly bushing, uh, here's the poly bush set. Um, I don't know if you see the part number there. This is from Alphaholics. So just two bushings. So these are our Super Pro brand, which is a good brand of poly bush. So if you wanted to change those out, you could. Anyway, this probably will outlive the life of the shock or the car. Um, Polly's pretty good these days. Anyway, uh, what you need to do is, oh, I'll give you a couple of other part numbers. So if you happen to buy the shock separately and you wanted the actual uh, bushing or mounting kit, there's the part set number from, uh, from Coney directly. This comes as part of the, uh, the package uh, for the shock, so they do include that, which is good. So it's got the, uh, the rubber uh, bushings for the top and the hardware and the little dust cap. So I think you can probably see that there. So we'll put those to good use. So eventually when we build this shock up, the top of it needs to look something like this. So that is the stock shock I'm showing with the bushing arrangement. So uh, basically metal plate here on the bottom, rubber bushing. This, is the, uh, this will be the plate actually on the car that sort of gets sandwiched between here. You've got a rubber bushing on top followed by a metal plate, then the uh, larger nut and then the lock nut on top. So we're going to do the same arrangement with the new hardware on the Coney Red Shock. So we'll put the bottom parts on. Obviously we can't put the top on yet until we get it installed in the car. But we'll put the bottom on at least. But before we do that, let's go through the adjustment process. And uh, it's a little bit difficult to, uh, to find this information I, find, I found. Um, fortunately I've got these uh, Coney Reds on two of my Triumphs. I've got them on my TR6 and on my TR3 so I'm somewhat familiar with how to adjust them although depending on the series of shock you get from Coney some of them are adjusted differently but we'll go through the adjustment procedures for the ones for specifically for the Alfa Romeo Spider. Alright let's go on to the adjustment process for the front shocks. The rear shocks are slightly different so these are for the front specifically. So uh, in order to adjust these shocks, there's a certain procedure that you need to follow. And uh, I'll show you how to get into the adjustment process first of all. And you're not probably going to be able to see this very clearly. But just look for it when you're actually trying to adjust your shocks. It'll make sense to you. Um, but uh, what you need to do is you need to push down. So first of all, I've got this mounted in a soft vise. So so wood, uh, a wood vise, so it's actually wood, not metal. So if you have soft jaws on your regular vise, I suggest you use that. So I've just got it obviously sitting vertically in a soft jawed vise. Now the adjustment procedure is to push down and with some pressure until you get to the bottom of the stroke. So at the bottom here, there's a cam um, with little, uh, it's like a little wheel basically with little indents that uh, some fingers fit into so you need to basically drop the top of the shock down, you need to turn it slightly to, and, and it'll actually drop a slight bit more, a couple of millimeters, in order to engage the pins in the top here with the cam in the bottom. And then you're going to turn the shock with a downward pressure applied so the cams are engaged. You want to turn it 
counterclockwise for a softer setting and clockwise for a firmer setting. Now my understanding with these shocks, according to Kony, there's about five and a half turns. So a turn is 180 degrees, so basically it's a half turn and there's a range of about five and a half turns from full soft to full hard. So I searched the forums uh, and uh, some Facebook groups to find out what the best settings for these shocks would be. And I don't know if there's necessarily a consensus or not on these. Some say go full soft, some say go slightly firmer in the front and maybe a little bit softer in the rear. So I think what we're going to do is probably going to do <clears throat> two clicks up from full soft uh, in the front. So we'll go ahead and we'll adjust the shocks accordingly to go two half turns from full soft. All right, again, I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see this, but here's the process to do this. So we're going to push down on the shock top and uh, then we're going to rotate it slightly to engage the cams. So or the cam at the bottom. So pressure down till it bottoms, then turn it slightly and if you look down here you should be able to see it drop ever so slightly. So I'm going to turn it uh, clockwise and you can probably, I don't know if you'll be able to see that on camera but it just engaged the cam on the bottom. So I've got a little bit of pressure still on the top. So we're going to go to full soft on these so I'm not sure how many turns that's going to be, but going to full soft, as mentioned, is counterclockwise. So counterclockwise, we're going to be turning it this way. So we're going to go all the way to full soft. Downward pressure, keep the cam engaged. Okay, I've just reached full soft. All right, so we'll go to the next step. We said we wanted to go two turns up towards uh, more stiff or firm shocks. So we're going to go clockwise to firm these up. Alright, here we go. So what I've done here is I've just put a little uh, black mark at the center of the front here just so I can watch the turns. And I've just done a trial test. It looks like I can only get about five turns from full soft to full hard on these shocks. So anyway, we're going to set it up two half turns from full soft. So we're at full soft right now. And as mentioned, we want to go clockwise to firm those up. So follow this here. So basically, we're going to bring this all the way back around. So we'll go there's one half turn and I'm applying downward pressure. And we'll come back to the center and that setting is where we want it to be. So what we want to do now is lift this without turning and that will disengage the cam and the shocks will be set. So all we're going to do is lift slightly. So the cam is now disengaged. Now you're free to do whatever you want with the shock. So we can extend it out if we wish. So there we go. Shocks are set for the front. So we'll go ahead and we'll install this on the passenger side and then we'll work on the driver's side. Alright, we're going to uh, start to install the shock on the car as mentioned. So I've just added the hardware from the Kony shock uh, to the top. So one washer. Then we've got the bush and you want to make sure that the flat side here goes down because the dimpled side goes up into uh, the stock mount location. So that goes like that. So then that's going to be pushed up into the location and then the top bush goes on like so to squeeze the uh, mount location. Then you've got the washer at the top and then you've got the two nuts. Now these nuts are the same size so anyway you've got a lock nut or a jam nut and a regular nut to install to keep that in place and we'll compress the bushings slightly. There is a little uh, guide that comes in the manual from Kony and uh, it basically shows you the uh, bushing, I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's the bushing orientation and they're telling you in this little, it's kind of like an Ikea pictograph kind of thing, 
they're telling you not to squish the heck out of the bushings that's a big X and then that's what they should look like when they're uh, on the car so that's what we're gonna do All right, guys, as you probably see, I've changed my mind and I've decided to go with the uh, Super Pro bushings. Once I started playing around with the, uh, the stock bushings, they seem more like rubber than poly to me, so I decided to swap them out. So we've got the uh, grease applied that's supplied in the uh, poly bushing kit, so the Super Pro grease, which again, I think is a synthetic grease. So we're going to go and uh, start uh, putting the bottom mount on and uh, we'll fit it loosely at the top. Remember, there's going to be some clearance issues at the top with the two nuts so uh, be prepared for that. Alright guys a quick look at our first shock installed so we've got the uh, washer, the lock nut and the nut tightened down here and we've got the uh, two nuts tightened down up top so uh, the bushings are not overly compressed which is good so we'll move on to the driver's side and do the same process. Alright before anybody mentions the uh, cap I did try to fit the cap up on the top there's a little dust boot for the uh, for the nuts but unfortunately there's no supposed no space to get that in it's actually that tight up there so unfortunately the old cap will have to stay off not that it does much anyway all right guys the driver's side is now installed and interesting enough we've got a little bit more room here between the uh, the body inner fender and the top of the shock so we're able to put the uh, dust boot on this side so there we go a little bit easier on the driver's side versus the uh, passenger side as far as the fitting of the shocks are concerned but they're both installed and uh, ready to go so about an hour or so so not too bad of a job the rears are going to be a little bit more difficult though yeah, just for fun I thought I'd clean up the old uh, shock a little bit so you could see that it was an original Spica shock so there's all the information there in the Alfa Romeo logo so there you go original part number. Alright let's get started on the uh, rear shock swap out and uh, as you can see I've got the rear tire off and just sitting under the car just for some added safety. So as mentioned the rear is a little more difficult than the front just because of access so uh, what I'm talking about is that on the interior of the car just got the uh, get that out. the rear drape here or the rear curtain has to be removed partially at least because there's a little plate behind here a little access plate that's going to allow us to actually bring the shock out from the interior of the car so what I'll do is I'll reveal that I'm going to do one side at a time we'll work on the passenger side first so we'll undo these screws that are holding up the uh, rear carpet and we'll uh, reveal that access panel and then we'll pick it up from there. Alright guys I've just dropped that rear uh, carpet down and you can see that black panel there that's the panel we're trying to remove so it looks like there's about four Phillips screws looks like there's a little bit of a uh, sealer there as well in the corner so we're going to remove that panel and that will give us access to the top of the shock from this side and we should be able to see it from the other side if we drop the trunk panel down let me see if we can see it over here. Drop the trunk, the panel drop down here, and you can see the top of the shock, which is that round piece right there, and those two bolts. Looks like they have a little orange paint on them. Those are the bolts that we're actually looking to get out to release the top of the shock. All right, here's a quick shot of that panel removed. Mine was only held on by two Phillips screws. I see there are three locations. Doesn't look like this bottom location was ever used. But uh, you can see those two locations there. So I've removed those screws. Let's put this panel here. And now 
you have access to the top of the shock from this side. So I believe that cap should just uh, pop off and uh, then we can go from there. All right, quick shot of that rubber cap and it just pries up and off. And there you can see beautiful looking, nice cadmium coated shock bolts. Look like they're brand new. All right, so that's the top of the shock. We're gonna go under the car. We're gonna undo the bottom mounts first. We'll show you where those are located. Okay, we're at the rear of the car and you can see the spring there. I'm not sure if you can see inside. That is where the shock runs. So there's a couple fasteners or a fastener on the bottom that we need to release before we push that up through the car and bring it through the interior of the car. So we're just about to get under the car and do that. So that fastener location will be just right here on this, I'm gonna call it a trailing arm location. So we're gonna get up and under there. And again, we've pre-sprayed this with some penetrating oil. So hopefully that'll come off fairly easily. All right, there is the shock mount underneath. So uh, I'm assuming it's gonna be the same size wrenches or socket that we used uh, for the front suspension. So we'll figure that out. We've got a ratchet and socket standing by. So we'll remove those uh, two nuts on the bottom of the shock here and then proceed to the next step. All right, quick look at the bottom hardware. So the uh, bushing there and the plate and then the two nuts that were uh, holding the bottom of the shock on. So the larger being a 19 mil, the smaller being the 17 mil. So 17 mil is the lock nut and the 19 mil is the regular nut. So now we're gonna move up to the top of the car and we're gonna go back and look at the mounting location at the top. All right guys, there are the two bolts uh, that were holding the top of the shock to the body and they are 13 mil. And with lock washers, I believe that red is red Loctite. So we'll probably put a little Loctite back on when we reinstall this. Now, that should just come out. And what we're going to do is we're going to transfer that little top hat piece to the new shock. So I believe that should just lift out now with a little persuasion. So we'll go ahead from the inside and try to remove that. Unfortunately, I can't show you the removal process because all you'll see is my big butt. All right, there's the empty void left by the removal of the shock. It came out pretty easy. The only thing you gotta be concerned about is when you're pulling that shock out from this location here, when you're pulling it up, obviously you don't wanna scratch your window. So you gotta be very careful when you're pulling not to apply too much pressure, let it slip and come up and hit your window. You've gotta kinda angle it, pull it and angle it forward to clear your window on your convertible top. So just be careful of that. I've got it over here on the bench. So what we'll do now is we'll separate the top piece that we require to add to the new shock. So that piece here, we're just gonna unbolt it from the top here and rescue this piece. There is the old shock. So it doesn't look too, too bad, but original to the car as mentioned. So anyway, we'll go ahead and we'll remove that piece and then we'll talk about the replacement Coney part numbers and how to adjust it. Okay, here are the Coney Red Classic rear shocks. And there's the Coney part number there. 80, you see that? 81781 is the part number. So these adjust a little bit differently than the front shocks. You notice there's no I on the bottom of the shock. And you wanna make sure that you orientate these properly when you're installing them. So this is the correct orientation. You do not want to mount them upside down. If you mount them upside down, water can get into this sleeve here and obviously corrode the shock from the inside out. So you want to make sure that when you install them, you want to install them so that this is the top, that is the bottom, okay? Okay, as mentioned, these are a little bit more tricky to adjust and it requires a couple of things to be done. So, uh, extend the shock fully and you're going to see a little nylon washer to begin with, a split washer. We're gonna remove this, okay? Then, at the top of the shock, and you can see these little two eyes here at the top, there's actually a rubber buffer in here. So you're gonna get a small screwdriver or something to poke with, and you're gonna drop this rubber buffer down. So let me get something to poke this down with, and that's just gonna slide down. 
it's also split. You'll be able to remove it at this location, and then we can remove, or then we can work on the next process of actually setting these shocks. So let me grab something to uh, bring that buffer down, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, and I've just uh, poke that buffer at the top. So if I shake this, there it is. You see that there? Now there is a split in it, so you can just uh, withdraw it. Easier said than done. There you go, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so pretty much the same process now that we removed the buffer and the little nylon washer. It's pretty much the same process as the front shock. So uh, just the clamping in the soft vise is a little different. Obviously we don't have the eye to clamp on, so I've just got this really loosely clamped here in the bottom, not to create too much pressure. You want to obviously squeeze the body of the shock nor do you want to squeeze it on the threads either. So we're just going to one hand it, we're going to push down and bring this all the way down to the bottom of his travel. And again, the same thing. We're going to go until we feel resistance and then with some downward pressure, let me see if you're in view here. Yep. So with some downward pressure, we're going to uh, find the cam and engage it. So let me just take my glasses off here so I can get down and look and see if this drops. We'll turn it to the right or to the left, it doesn't really matter. Downward force. There you go. Just drop down. Okay. And then it's the same process to adjust for soft or hard. Counterclockwise for soft. Clockwise for hard or firm. So let's go counterclockwise and we'll go all the way again downward pressure. We'll go all the way soft. So that is right against its stop. We don't want to force it. Okay. So right now that's all the way soft. And I believe that's where we want to keep these shocks. I'm just going to go rotate it a little tiny bit and then we'll disengage the cam. We'll just, con we'll just confirm that one more time. So all the way stopped and then we'll just disengage the cam, lift up, and that shock is now set all the way soft. So again, that's what the decision is on the rear, all the way soft. We went two clicks up towards firm on the fronts, and we'll keep it at soft on the rear. So we need to put the buffer back in. So what we'll do, the put the buffer back in, and the little uh, concave part, or the one with the little chamfer on the edge, that goes at the top. You can usually see the little dimples where you pushed it down with your screwdriver or your punch, whatever you use. Flat spot goes to the bottom. So again, just back on your shock. That'll go up in the tube. Put your split nylon washer back on. Again, easier said than done. There you go. Compress it down. And that will return that buffer all the way to the top. All right, onto the car. All right, so remember to install it on the car, we need to add this little top hat piece. So again, sort of the standard process to bush it. Here are the stock bushings that I just took off. So it'll look something like this. It'll go bushing, sorry, uh, flat washer or cup bushing. I'm going to put the new bushings on, but I'm just showing you the order of uh, order of this, how this is arranged. So that it goes like that. Then your cap goes on, like so. And then your bushing into the top and into the slot or space in the cap. Push that down. Again, it's just going to be expanded a little bit, so push that down. And then your washer, and then of course your two Am I in focus? Sorry, and then your two nuts. Alright, so that's the process for that. So we'll break out the new hardware bag. I'll give you a part number on that if you're interested. This is the part number. Can you see that? For the rear shocks. Alright, let me do that and we'll come back. 
Okay, quick look of that uh, top hat piece installed on the new Kony shock. So that's what that looks like. Bushing washer on the top, and again, we've got the bushing and the washer on the bottom, as mentioned. So we'll go ahead and we'll drop this in place. And it should be a little easier so you don't have that bellows. A bellows kind of uh, makes it a little bit more difficult to when you're pulling it out. So I'm sure it's going to be a little bit difficult or a little bit more easy to push it in place without those bellows going through the center of the coil spring. All right, let's drop this in. Uh, one more thing, don't forget to put your uh, bottom bushing on the uh, before you drop it into its place. Uh, just put a little bit of grease on here on the bottom just to keep the bushing from sliding off as we drop it down in its hole. One other thing you may want to do is just make sure you've got it extended just to probably right there so uh, you don't want the buffer to fall out or that nylon washer but we want some length to be able to pick up where this needs to uh, sit into its uh, hole in the trailing arm. So. Anyway, we'll go ahead and we'll put this in the car and hopefully this uh, bushing will stay in place. All right, once you've dropped the shock in, you just want to confirm that you can see your washer and your uh, rubber bushing still in place, that you didn't lose it on the way down. I can see it there in place. Now this should be dropped down into its slot below here. Let's go take a look underneath and see if we can see the end of the shock poking through. There it is. Can you see that? Yeah. So we'll go ahead, we'll put our washer and our other hardware, our washer, the bushing and our nuts on the bottom here. And then we'll button things up on the inside and call this done. Obviously we need to do the bolts up with the red Loctite up top as well, but at least we'll start down here and get this started. All right, we've got some red Loctite here, so we're just gonna add a little bit to these fasteners here and feed those back in and tighten them back up and then we'll go back back down and we'll finish up the bottom but we'll do these top first all right one more last look down here everything's tightened up so let's put our uh let's put our cap on down here so it looks good so nice nice so let's move back up to the top we'll put our cap on up there and then we'll start to button things up. Alright, so we're good to go here on the inside. Don't forget to put your little uh, plastic cap back on. So we'll do that. We'll put our plate back on and we'll put our carpet back up and the passenger side will be done. We'll do the same process for the driver's side. That is the rear shock install for the Coney Reds, Coney Classics, whatever you want to call them. So that's not too bad, but obviously much more difficult than the uh, than the fronts. Just more fiddly than difficult, let's say. All right, guys, just wrapping up the uh, driver's side of the rear uh, shock change out. And uh, it is a little bit more of a challenge back here because of all this emission stuff in this corner. You may find it necessary to move this tank off its mounting location to get yourself a little more room. I was able to get my hands in there. It was tight but I was able to sort of work uh, on this side and from inside the car and I was able to get those two fasteners uh, off first of all and then back on which is sometimes more of a challenge as mentioned. So that's uh, all done. The uh, bottom of the shock is all tightened up. Top is obviously tightened and the cap has been put back on. Still have a couple of uh, fasteners to do up on the carpet but the, uh, the plate has been put back in there. So we're good to go as far as the shock conversion is concerned shock upgrade whatever you want to call it used a lot of gloves in the process because I didn't want to get uh, any grease on the interior so I, whenever I swapped from working under the car or anywhere where I had grease on my hands and went into the interior I wanted to make sure that I had gloves on clean gloves on so we didn't get any stains on either the top from me grabbing it here on the outside or uh, getting anything on the carpet on the inside or on the seats for example all that interior is new in this car so Wanted to prevent any damage. All right, guys, I think that's it. So uh, we'll call the shock project done, and uh, we'll find another project to do. I think we're going to do a, uh, a brake pad upgrade at some point. Those I do not have in stock yet, so we'll have to order those, uh, along with a few other things. I'm thinking of uh, asking Doc if he wants to do the limit strap back here. This one's still in pretty good shape. It's got a lot more years left in it, but I know that Doc did order a new limit strap and uh, rebound uh, or bump stop for this car. So maybe we'll install that. I'll ask Doc first whether he wants to do that or not. 
So that will probably be the next project is the bump stop and the limit strap, but we'll see. All right, that's it for tonight, guys. Thanks for watching, thanks for commenting, and thanks for subscribing. We'll see you on the next video.